Hi there, and welcome back to Saddle Talk. This is my Shadow of the Demon Lord video cast, I guess you could call it. And um, haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, it's been a couple weeks, so I think the last time that we were chatting with each other, I had uh, created a character, and that character's name was Brom Ironstone, and he was a dwarf. And he was just starting his career as a uh, as a character in the Shadow of the Demon Lord world. So what I would like to do uh, tonight is to go ahead and take Brahm Ironstone in his first solo adventure. And so as you can see, I have his character sheet up here in roll 20. And at some point, I'll probably go through these character sheets with y'all and uh, show you the cool bits and pieces of it but not tonight tonight i'm just going to jump right in and do a uh do a battle um an encounter with brahm ironstone and hope that he survives so uh this is the character sheet and this is the page i will be primarily using uh for the encounter and so let's just uh, set up the scene here as you can see old brahm has been traveling with a couple of wagons uh, down this path, trail, alongside this river. When they see a wreck off to the side of the road, and they stop to investigate, uh, when they notice a creature is hiding amongst the wreckage, and that creature is a Fomor, which is a type of beast man. And the beast man is looking at Brom Ironstone with hatred in his eyes and hunger uh, is flowing from his mouth in the form of uh, saliva dripping profusely. He wants to eat Brahm Ironstone, and of course Brahm doesn't want to be eaten, so that causes a conflict that will start us in this encounter. So what we have to do now is we have to decide who goes first. So in Shadow of the Demon Lord, uh, a combat uh, encounter is it was resolved in rounds as uh, with many other games and this particular game uses an pretty innovative uh, initiative system which uses what is referred to as fast turns and slow turns fast turns are the uh, characters that choose to go quickly in the round and in doing so they can only perform one of two things they can either perform an action or they can perform a movement they cannot do both in the same fast turn so if a character chooses to go fast they're either moving or they are taking an action of some sort in then in the uh, second part of the round is the slow turn the slow turn allows a character to do both an action and a movement. And so a character can move and attack, or can attack and move, or can move, attack and move, uh, up to their maximum speed value. And um, that can be done in the slow part of the round. Now the slow turn, uh, what the, the consequence of going on the slow turn is that um, everybody that's going fast goes before you. So there's a, there's a possibility that you could be attacked uh, prior to you acting on the slow turn. So that's the risk that you take by going slow, but the benefit is that you can do more. So Brom here, he's going to see that there is a beastman over there, but the beastman is a bit far away. And unfortunately, Brom uh, only has his club as a weapon. He does not have any type of uh, ranged weapon that he can use to deal with this beastman. And of course, he wants to deal with him before the beast man comes and eats him. So, Brahm is going to choose to go on the slow turn. So, that means that Brahm can move over to the beast man, or at least closer to him, and he will be able to attack him, hopefully, if he can get to him. Now, the beast man, uh, he is what is referred to as a, a non-player character, an NPC or a monster. Uh, those are the creatures, the things that are run by the uh, the game master or the dungeon master. And um, the the monsters always go after the uh, 
uh, player characters go. So, or the NPCs or the monsters go after the player characters go. So if um, my FOMOR here wants to go on the fast turn, then he would have to wait until all the player characters have gone on the, that have chosen to go on the fast turn, complete their fast turn, and then the beast man FOMOR here could take his fast turn. Uh, the, the bad guys always go after the, uh, the characters. However, if there are no player characters that go on the fast turn, but the beast man does, then he gets to go before the player characters that go on a slow turn uh, go. Now on the slow turn, if Mr. Beastman Fomor decides he wants to uh, wait until the slow turn, then of course he would have to go after all the player characters who chose to go on the slow turn takes their slow turn. So that's pretty much how a, uh, uh, well, well and I forgot, there is also what is referred to as an end of round. Uh, and that is basically just the part of the round in which you resolve any uh, any any type of uh, things that um, have a duration. Uh, most things in this game that have a duration will end at the end of round part of the round. So that's why it's actually got its own little uh, its own little segment in the uh, the the course of the round, so that you can resolve uh, whatever act whatever things uh, spells or uh, conditions or uh, actually, not conditions, afflictions is what they're referred to in this game. And uh, those are all uh, resolved at the end of round, uh, part of the round. Okay, so getting back to Mr. Brom Ironstone's dilemma, um, he is choosing to go slow. Now, the Beast Man, however, the Beast Man has a spear. And normally, you would think that you could chuck a spear, but... Apparently, this beast man, as uh, his stat block here shows me, uh, can only use a spear in melee attacks, which means hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, or, you know, base-to-base -base combat, however you want to refer to it. You got to be up close and personal in order to use this weapon. So the beast man is actually going to also um, go on a slow turn, um, except, you know what, this beast man isn't particularly bright. So he is actually going to run up to Brom Ironstone because his, his, his belly is really growling. He's just, uh, he's just slavering for uh, a bite of, uh, of dwarf, even though uh, he probably can't reach him uh, and attack. So he is going to go on a fast turn so that he can move as quickly as he can before Brom Ironstone has an opportunity to react to him. So that is how we are going to handle this, uh, this round. So we have the fast turn and we have a slow turn. Uh, the Beastman is going fast. So I'm going to put him up here in the turn order. Uh, this, the turn order is in roll 20 is how you uh, track your initiative uh, for the various games. And so uh, for this combat, uh, Mr. Beastman Fomor is going to go fast and then Brom Ironstone is going to go slow. So Beastman. It is your turn. We are on the fast turn, so you get to go. And the beast man, you know, basically, rawr, hungry. He runs up to Brom Ironstone using the, uh, his full burst of speed. So his speed, which is how far he can move in, uh, a, in, on his turn, is a value of 10. Now, that, that equates to 10 yards in each square uh, on this grid equates to one yard. So we just need to count out 10 squares and the cart's kind of in the way. So he's going to have to move here as one. Then we'll say this is two and this is three. We'll say this is four. And he goes five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, hey, he gets right up in Brom Ironstone's face. So he is uh, ready to take a chomp out of him. Uh, the problem is, he's on. He's he would chose to go on the fast turn, so that means he can only do one thing, and his one thing was to move. So he is done. The Fomor then has to now defer to the slow turn that Brom Ironstone is going to take, and so Brom Brom Ironstone it has his club ready. And he was going to move up to the Fomor on the slow turn, but since the Fomor moved up to him, 
then he really doesn't need to move. Uh, so he's just going to take a swing at him. So opening up my Brom Ironstone character sheet here, and let's move, move it over here so it's not in the way, uh, we can see that uh, he has a club. And he's not really too proficient at the club. Um, Sadly, uh, he is um, going to just tar try to swing at it the best he can, even though he is not too, um, too good at it. So here we go. He has to uh, roll a value that equals or exceeds the defense value of the FOMOR. And the FOMOR's defense I have here in this little blue circle, and that is a defense value of 14. So let's see how Brahm Ironstone uh, does with his attacks. Now, as you can see, when I roll to uh, hit with the club, I get this input value of boons and banes. Uh, if Mr. Brahm Ironstone had a boon or a bane to attack, then I would enter, enter that value here. A boon would just be a positive number value and a bane would be a negative number value. Um, but Mr. Uh, Brahm Ironstone does not have a boon or a bane on this attack. So this is just a straight up normal standard attack. So we just bypass that and we get to see now what his uh, attack roll was. And as you can see, Mr. Brom Ironstone succeeded in his attack by rolling actually what he needed in order to hit the FOMOR. And that is a 14 on a roll of D20. Uh, the damage automatically rolled, because that's the way I have it set up in roll 20. And with his club, he smacks the FOMOR upside the head. And the FOMOR takes two points of damage. Now, for the FOMOR, the FOMOR has how much health? He has 10 health. So that means that the FOMOR can take 10 points of damage before he is out of commission. He just took two from Mr. Brom Ironstone, which I'm going to put here in this little red circle, and that will denote how much damage he has. Now, remember in Shadow of the Demon Lord, you never subtract from your health value when you take damage. You instead start your damage at zero and you work your way up until your damage equals or exceeds your health value. Once your damage equals and exceeds the health value, that's when things start falling down and dying. So, good round for Mr. Brom Ironstone, bad round for Mr. Fomor. He's starting to second guess whether or not this meal is worthwhile. Now we are at the end of round. There are no uh, there are no spells. There are no effects that need to culminate uh, at the end of this round. So we will just skip this and move on to round two. And on round two, we now need to decide uh, who's going when, fast turns or slow turns. So Brom, being as how he is already in uh, contact with the Beast Man. He really doesn't see the need to uh, have to move at this point, so he is going to take a fast turn. The Beast Man, likewise, is also uh, able to attack since he is uh, in contact with Brom, so he is also going to go fast. However, Mr. Beast Man, Fomor, is a monster, and therefore he goes after Brom by default because the bad guys always go after the player characters. So Brom Ironstone gets to raise his club again, and he gets to try to whack the heck out of the FOMOR. And will he succeed? We shall see. The roll this time is, oh, sadness. Brom Ironstone just rolled a two, and that is not sufficient to hit the Beast Man's 14 defense. So the Beast Man laughs at Brom Ironstone's paltry attempt at hitting him, and he tries to strike him with his spear. He tries to gig him with it. So I need to open the Beastman character sheet now, and I will just overlay that over here for the moment, and I will attack with my spear. The Beastman is better at attacking than Brom Ironstone, so this may be bad news for Brom Ironstone. And guess what? It is bad news for Brom Ironstone. Brom's uh, defense value is only nine. Now your defense value is normally equal to your agility. Uh, Brom's agility is nine because he's a dwarf and they're not very agile. 
So since he's not wearing any type of armor, uh, because he's uh, not purchased any armor yet, because he hasn't needed it in his life up until this point, uh, his defense is very low. So he's very easy to hit. Uh, fortunately, Brom Ironstone is a dwarf, and dwarfs are very hardy uh, characters. And so he has a good number of health points. That uh, means he can take some some hits, some pretty good hits, and uh, still keep going. Uh, so the Beastman did maximum damage with his spear. And so Brom reels with the, uh, the, with the attack and is uh, stabbed with the spear. But luckily it's just a flesh wound. And Brom Ironstone takes the six points of spear damage. He's still standing. He's still got uh, a good nine points of health remaining. Uh, or nine points of damage before he reaches his health. So he's still good to go. So that's both fast turns that have been completed. Again, nothing to do at the end of the round. And so we move on to round three. Round three, we have the same choice to make. Is Brom going to go fast or is he going to go slow? Well, he really is not interested in moving at this point. Uh, his back is to the wagon, but he's also protecting his horse, and he doesn't want his horse to get hurt. So he's going to stay put, and the beastman, likewise, is not going to move. So they are both, go both going to continue to stay on the fast turns. So being as how Brahm is a player character, he will go first on the fast turn, and he will again try to hit the Fomor with a club. However, this time, Brahm is feeling a bit, uh, a bit brazen. And so he, he's got a little bit of confidence now that he swung his club a couple times, even though he missed the second time. He is actually going to use a combat action. So what does that mean? Well, I will tell you as soon as I find the combat actions here in my rule book. And if you go into the rule book under the how to play the game section of the rule book you have under making attacks you have the various things that you can do uh, when you are making uh, attacks and there are two types of attacks there are ranged attacks and there are melee attacks and there are different options that you can choose when you are making a melee attack or a ranged attack uh, a normal attack is just what i've been doing up at this point uh, just swinging your club and hope you hit However, there are specialty attacks that you can make, and those specialty attacks include a driving attack. That's when you make the attack roll with one bane. On a success, you and the target move a number of yards equal to your strength modifier in the same direction. A guarded attack is you make an attack roll with one bane, but the next creature to make an attack roll against your defense before the end of the round does so with one bane. A lunging attack, you can increase your reach by one yard, but you make the attack roll with one bane. A shifting attack, you can make an attack roll with one bane. On success, your movement does not trigger free attacks from the target until the end of the round. And then finally, an unbalancing attack. You make the attack roll with one bane. On a success, your target, if, if the target is uh, your size or smaller, it must make an agility challenge roll. And then on a failure, the target falls prone. So out of all of these, uh, we are going to use a guarded attack. Since his agility and his defense value is so low, um, Mr. Brom Ironstone thinks that uh, he better be a little bit more guarded uh, against the Fomor's attacks. So he's still going to attack. However, he's going to be a little bit more cautious. In doing so, he sacrifices his uh, accuracy by giving himself one bane. Now, a bane means that when you make your attack roll, you roll an extra d6 with that attack roll, and you subtract the value of that d6 from the attack roll. That all obviously is going to cause a, uh, your attack roll to be less than what it normally would be. However, the benefit is that when the benefit, when the, uh, the Fomor attacks uh, Brahm Ironstone, he will also uh, incur a bane on his attack. So that's the, uh, that's the choice that Brom Ironstone is making this round. So he is making a guarded attack. He still makes his attack roll, but this time we are going to do so with one bane. So to denote one bane, 
uh, in the input value field here, we do a negative one because it's just one bane, and the negative uh, tells it that, to, that, that, that it's a bane and not a boon. So we hit submit, and Brom, oh, sadness. Uh, that is a horrible roll. He rolls actually well below um, one, negative one, actually. And so that is a horrible miss. The beast man gets to attack next. And so the beast man will uh, make his attack roll with a spear. But since Brom Ironstone is more guarded, he also is going to be doing so out of penalty. So his penalty is one bane. And he, too, rolls poorly. And with that bane, it makes it even worse. So the beast man and Brom miss each other this round. So this is going pathetic, pathetically slow, but these are starting characters. Uh, so, um, you know, it can happen. So we are now on the third round of combat, or actually the fourth round of combat. And Brom Ironstone is now going to choose to do the fast attack again. So is the beast man. Uh, in fact, we're just going to say for the remainder of the combat, they're both going to go fast, just to kind of speed things along here. And so Brom, bringing his character sheet back up, he's going to swing his club. No boons or banes this time, because he's just going to make a normal attack. And he rolls a 10. That would hit a defensive 10, but it does not hit a defensive 14. So then the Beastman gets to do his attack on the uh, fast turn. And again, he will hit with his spear. No boons or banes. And he rolls a 16. Ouch. That hits Brom Ironstone with another spear attack, causing another wound on our favorite dwarf. The dwarf then has to add that value, that damage value, to his existing damage value. If I can get it to come up here. Ah. So he already has six points of damage. We just took four more. Brom Ironstone is now at 10 points of damage. So, we have a choice to make. Is Brom Ironstone going to stay and fight? Or is he going to try to run away? Well, he saw the Beastman move. He doesn't think he can outrun him because he's got his, uh, uh, his, his dwarven posture, unfortunately, his dwarven stature, I should say, is um, not built for speed. So, uh, if he tried to run away, the Beastman would most likely catch him anyway. So. Running away would also dishonor him and his family and his ancestors. He doesn't want to uh, shame his family or his ancestors. He'd rather die. So he's going to stay here. And for round five, he is going to fight to the death and hope that this next attack is more successful than his last ones. He puts both his hands on that club and he prays to the honored dead. Uh, that would be the uh, ancestors. Uh, and the Dwarven Ancestors, and he swings that club once again. Hopefully, he will do better. Uh, sadly, he does not. He rolls an 11, and 11 is not good enough to hit that, that, uh, that, that, that spry beast man who's kind of darting around with that spear. All right, so that was Brahm Ironstone's fast turn. The beast man's fast turn He's going to, you guessed it, swing that spear or uh, poke that spear at Brom Ironstone. And here we go. He rolls poorly. So Brom lives for yet another round. And now we are on round six. Round six and Brom Ironstone swings his club once again. Please, oh please, can we connect? Oh, so close. But you know what? I just realized that Brahm has got a strength of 11, which means that he should have a plus one on his attack rolls. But when I added this weapon to the character sheet, I did not get my plus one value added to my attack rolls. And I'm not really sure why. It should be a plus one. So just this once, I'm going to... Uh, not go by what the character sheet says here because uh, apparently it's some kind of glitch and I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, there may be a legitimate reason why, but I don't know what it is. So I'm going to go by what I know are the rules and that is that you should add your strength modifier 
to your attack rolls. But you never add the strength modifier to your damage rolls unless you have an ability that says you can do that. All right, so he rolls a 13. Add one to that because of his strength modifier, and all of a sudden you get a 14, and that is what he needs to hit that FOMOR. So, what kind of damage did he do? Oh, just one? Really? All right. The Beast Man is now up to three damage, and he needs to get up to ten in order to take him out. So, Brom, you, you, uh, you nicked him with that club, but it's still not good enough. All right, Beast Man. The Demon Lord is calling to you from the void. So if you can't take this one pathetic dwarf out, then you don't deserve to worship the Demon Lord. So here we go. Another spear attack against the dwarf. <laughs> and he rolls a one. So that is a, uh, that is a miss. Uh, he obviously didn't hit the dwarf's very low uh, uh, defense value. So we are now on round seven. Now this is going much slower than a normal combat. You know, when you have multiple combatants, typically goes a little bit faster than this because you have multiple people hitting. Some people are better hitting than others. And you have more attack rolls per round, which means there's more of a chance that somebody's going to hit. Um, so for this example, I'm rolling really badly for these two. So this is taking... A little while to uh, to resolve. Uh, so don't let this be a, um, you know, just don't let this uh, color your opinion on how fast combat moves in this in this game. As you can see, the rounds are moving fairly quickly. Uh, the problem is that uh, these two are rolling for shit. So it's taking a little longer. So here we go. Brom Ironstone picks up that club and he swings again. And let's see if he can't connect this time. No. And so the beast man. Let's go beast man. Whoops. Here we are. Beast man rolls. A five. All right. So obviously this is um, going nowhere. At this point, however, I think you can see how combat is, uh, is handled in this game. Once. Brom Ironstone or the Beast Man manages hit to hit uh, the other guy enough so that their damage value equals their health value. That means that character goes down. Now, if you're a player character, that means you are incapacitated um, and you start. You have to start making fate rolls. Fate rolls are what uh, determines whether you take a turn for the worse and start dying or whether you kind of stabilize, but you just kind of remain unconscious uh, until somebody wakes you up or until you wake up on your own a couple hours later. Um, so I'm going to go more into that in another uh, video. I just kind of wanted to give an idea of how combat is handled uh, in this game. And I probably should have put somebody in there with uh, some ranged attacks. Maybe we'll do that next time. Um, so we're going to say that uh, the honored dead smiled upon Brom Ironstone and allowed him to make his last couple of attacks uh, successful, and he killed the Beast Man. Yay! So Brom Ironstone is successful. He climbs back on his wagon, and he continues on down the road and uh, decides that, um, you know, maybe fighting is not... Uh, what he needs to do and actually another thing i forgot to do is this this is first adventure and so what what do adventurers do they explore along with fight so he's going to go over here he's going to see what uh what this what this beast man was looking for and as he's kind of rummaging through all this stuff he can see that this cart once belonged to a priest and he finds a prayer book amongst the uh, items within the, uh, the ruined items within the cart. And he starts reading through this prayer book. And it is a prayer book for the uh, cult of the new god. And so the dwarf, Brom Ironstone, now has reading material uh, for his journey, his uh, ongoing journey down this, down this path that he has taken. However, having a prayer book now, he is starting to think, hmm, 
the honored dead really weren't uh, weren't with me too much. Maybe they don't like me. Maybe I should consider worshiping another god. Maybe this new god is uh, just the ticket. So Brahm Einstein is going to read through this prayer book, learn all about the new god, and when he reaches uh, first level at the end of this uh, adventure, all right, when he reaches uh, the end of this adventure, I should say, he will level up to first level. And that's when he makes his first uh, novice path choice. Will it be priest? Priest of the new god, perhaps? Maybe. Or maybe he'll read through this book and figure, meh, I don't like this new god. I'm going to stick with the honored dead. And, um, you know, they did help me out there towards the end. I'm going to venerate them by becoming a priest of the honored dead. Could go either way. We'll find out next time. All right, cultists, that is it for today's video. I'm going to call it quits here. And I am going to um, think about what my next video is going to be. Until then, I'm going to give you a hearty hail.